Welcome back to Living Local. A local World War II historical presentation series is kicking off at two local libraries soon. These events are meant to serve the public by encouraging a deeper understanding about how the Rock Island Arsenal played a part in our nation's history. Joining us today in the studio is Kevin Broflot with uh, he's deputy historian at the U.S. Army Sub Sub excuse me Sustainment Command at the Rock Island Arsenal. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us here today. All right, let's talk about you first, because you know, a lot, not a lot of us in the general public meet actual historians on a regular basis. So talk about how you got into that and, and your interest in you know, U.S. American um, military history. Well, it, um, I really uh, it started with my parents taking me to Gettysburg when I was uh, uh, a young kid and yeah. then just uh, exploded from there. So it's, uh, I've always been interested in uh, military history ever since and uh, got my degree in history and then uh, came here to Rock Island as a uh, reserve soldier and uh, was able, fortunate to, uh, I should say, I was fortunate enough to get a, uh, a job here at Rock Island Arsenal as a historian. I've been, to, I've been to the Gettysburg Battlefield too. It's a beautiful place, yeah, very it historical. Is. So tell us about the, the presentation series. What's it all about? Uh, so the presentation series really focuses on World War II with a, a theme of commemorating the 75th anniversary mm -hmm. of um, 1944 with the highlights of the Normandy invasion as well as uh, the Battle of the Bulge at the end of the year. But each month kind of corresponds with uh, a battle or an event that took place during that month. So you're basically going month by month through the entire year of 1944 then? Correct, uh, for a 10-month series. Okay, so how, what role did the arsenal really play in that then? Uh, it was huge in supporting the, uh, the, the war effort in uh, a huge number of uh, ways where they, they made a lot of stuff for the airborne forces, a lot of uh, you know, carriages and cannons and as well as uh, ammunition in World War I. Uh, but uh, the arsenal did a lot of uh, logistical support for uh, World War II. Tell me about how, because we, we know the arsenal has been around for, you know, or at least military army presence on the, uh, the island has been around for at least 200 years or thereabouts. How has that evolved over time? Uh, well, it's been a very interesting history Long over process. time. Yeah, it, it, yeah it, uh, <laughs> starting from, you know, our expansion west out into the, uh, the frontier area, mm -hmm. which is, was basically right at the edge of the frontier when Fort Armstrong was established. And then during the Civil War, having the, uh, uh, the Confederate prison, uh, prisoner of war camp right, here. Right. Um, and then the formal, you know, uh, founding of the actual arsenal itself to be uh, the national arsenal to basically build everything a soldier, a soldier was supposed to need for, um, you know, for his time in the military. Right. So. Let's circle back to the, the presentation specifically on, you know, the Second World War. What's so important about this, these, you know, presentations and learning about that era in history now? Well, it's, it's here at the uh, Army Sustainment Command in the history office, you know, it's just like with any historian's role is that it's important to remember our history so that we don't forget it, so we don't make mm -hmm. the same mistakes. And then also to honor and remember those veterans that uh, served during this time. And then um, it, it locally remembering what Art Rock Island Arsenal did in the community how they, it supported the arsenal um, in the war effort as, as well. Because you're talking about, I mean, 75 years ago, specifically 1944, so a lot of the people who, you know, took part in the conflict, of course, are no longer living, right? Or at least in their 90s, most of them. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the things that, you know, we always encourage that uh, the, the people who did work at the arsenal or who served in the military, you know, were, were losing them very quickly. And so to try to preserve that history and talk to the, uh, you know, relatives or people that you know that, uh, did serve during that time, so you know to remember that, and so we always encourage that, and, and as part of the series, is try to spark an interest in right. in understanding it, that history and educate a lot of people who don't maybe have any firsthand contact with anybody who Correct, lived through yeah. that period anymore. Right? Yeah, when, when when you talk to them, it's always good to have a little bit of a educated background, or yes. a little historical yes. knowledge. So, <laughs> so the arsenal uh, has a lot of still historical sites on it, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, we started a new uh, QR code tour and, and things so that people can actually self-guided tours around uh, the arsenal itself. But uh, we have Fort Armstrong, uh, Davenport House, uh, Quarters One, uh, but also keynote the, uh, the Rock Island Arsenal Museum, which is the uh, Army's second oldest museum. So we always want to uh, encourage people to come and, and check out the, uh, the arsenal itself, the historic sites, and to appreciate the, the treasure that we have um, here at Rock Island. 
Yeah, right here in the Quad Cities. I mean, tons of history that you can see all the time. So if folks want to go see any of, you know, like you said, myriad of historical sites on the island, how do they go about doing that? Because I know a lot of, you know, the people in the general public, like myself, might say, oh, you know, I'm trying to get onto a military installation, there's security, it's kind of intimidating to just drive across the bridge to get in there. So how does that work? Well, it's always best to uh, contact the, uh, the Rock Island Arsenal uh, Visitor Center first, okay. um, or take a look at the website, just to take a look at the, uh, the restrictions or um, limitations for people to come. But um, it's also best to um, stop by on your way in. Um, it, the best way to enter is through the Moline Gate or the eastern side of the okay. island. And they'll give you all the information you need to know from there, give you um, a year's pass. And then um, pick up the, uh, like you see here, the, uh, the visitor's guide and the, uh, um, the maps and everything and to find all the historic sites and get all the background for it. Did you dig up anything interesting when you were, uh, were researching these World War II presentations you were going to put on? Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of fascinating history. Like today we're actually doing a series, uh, or starting the series today, I should say, on uh, the American preparation for World War II and then uh, Pearl Harbor itself. And we try to... Um, on events where you know people have a loose knowledge of, mm -hmm. of Pearl Harbor, obviously, mm -hmm. that right. brought us into the war. We try to bring up things that you don't normally know, like uh, the United States had a, a war plan starting, it was called um, Operation Orange. They were different colors, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it, it started way like 1919. So we were already planning for um, an invasion of, you know, or an attack at Pearl Harbor or an invasion of the Philippines at that time. So little things like that that you don't normally hear about that, um, you know, the plans that took place for years right. prior to the, right. some of these events. So. Digging in deep beyond just the major, you know, exactly. dates in history. And trying to make it interesting to have people, you know, you always think of, uh, I, I sucked in history class. Right. Know, well, this is your opportunity to come and hear something that hopefully we try to make it as yeah. interesting as possible. Your opportunity to learn without having to get a grade for it. Yes, exactly. There we won't you grade go. you, I promise. All right, so remind us again, where exactly are these presentations taking place? Uh, the presentations are taking place at the, uh, the uh, Davenport East Branch Library okay. and at the Rock Island uh, Main Branch Library. Um, and the, the times vary, but mm -hmm. uh, check out the, uh, each of the library's websites and they actually have the, uh, the specific dates okay. and times that correspond with that. So there's a lot of options, though, to there see is, get yeah. any of this. All right, yes. Kevin, thanks for joining us this morning. If you want more information about the series, please visit the World of War II, uh, vi excuse me, the Rock Island Library and the Davenport Library's websites for a full schedule and times of those presentations. Of course, we'll also have the details posted on our Quad Cities. Dot com. Stick around, we got more Living Local coming up.